DMZ, also known as a demilitarized zone. Now, is that just me or does that sound awesome? So what is a DMZ? Well, the name actually comes from the military and in military terms is an area where military activity is forbidden, often along borders. A well-known example of a demilitarized zone is the border between North and South Korea. Well, a DMZ in computer terms is very similar. It's an area of a network where security rules and policies are more relaxed. But why on earth would you want to relax security policies? Well, imagine this. You have a web server. You install it on the network just like any of your other devices. You want people to access your web server and visit your website, right? So you allow public access to your web server through your router and your firewall. Great. So now people can come, browse your website, www.example.com, and the request will be sent to your web server sitting inside your network. Now this may seem fine, but it leaves you vulnerable to attacks. Web servers and websites are not bulletproof. They require lots of work to keep them maintained, up to date and secure. So let's say an attacker targets your website. That attacker is then able to get access to the web server itself. This is where the problem starts. Because our web server is installed alongside our other corporate servers and workstations, the attacker can now start to attack these machines from the web server. With a bit of luck, the attacker could gain access to the entire network. This is called lateral movement. It's where the attacker uses a compromised machine to gain access to the other systems in the same network. So from here, it's really up to the attacker what they do next. It could be the exfiltration of your data, or it could be to infect your system with ransomware, which will encrypt all of your data and you'll be told to pay a ransom to decrypt it. Okay, so that is the problem with installing web servers and other publicly facing machines into your network. So what is the solution? Well, instead of installing the web server in the corporate network, we can install it in its own network called a DMZ. So now you'll see we have two firewalls separating the DMZ. The first firewall allows public access to our web server. The second firewall, however, blocks public access. And this is how a DMZ is created. So let's go back to our example. If an attacker is able to get access to our web server, they may try to get lateral movement by attacking other machines in the network. Well, because we have separated this web server into its own network, well, there are no other machines to attack. And our second firewall is blocking access to our corporate network. So while the web server has been compromised, the DMZ allows us to contain the attack to just that web server. This dramatically reduces the impact of this cyber attack and this makes the hacker sad. Meanwhile, the rest of the corporate network is unharmed and operating as normal. Okay, so that is a very high look at what a DMZ is. Now let's look at how this actually works. So let's look at our firewalls. The general rule of thumb is to block all incoming traffic from the public internet. Of course, this would be a problem for us because we want to allow access to our web server. So we need to open up our firewall for port 443, which is the port number for HTTPS. And we need to forward that to the web server. This will allow access to our web server from the outside world. Now to stop anyone gaining access to our internal corporate network, we keep our second firewall blocking all incoming traffic. So this is typically how larger networks create their DMZs. It's more common for smaller businesses or DMZs with less traffic to use just one firewall instead of two. The way this works is simple. The DMZ is connected to the interface on a firewall. This is then added to a firewall zone or a separate VLAN. Then we can use firewall rules to allow access to port 443 but only to the DMZ interface and nowhere else. This essentially provides us with the same thing, a separate network for your publicly facing servers while protecting the internal network from attackers.
The benefit of a single firewall setup is simplicity and it's much more cost effective. The two firewall setups, however, can provide better scalability and redundancy. Some people will even argue that it provides better security as well when you use two different firewall vendors. For example, a vulnerability on one firewall won't provide the attacker access through both firewalls. So this is why it's important to use DMZs for any of your publicly accessible assets. Of course, this doesn't just need to be web servers. It could be FTP servers, email servers, or anything else externally facing. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe. The support from you guys really helps this channel grow. Other than that, thank you for watching.